Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 22 of November 2022. Uh, so today around the table we have your servitor Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark White who just joined, Stéphane Merle and Kevin Martins. Um, as far as I can tell. No, there is only one E, sorry. One day I will be able to write it correctly. I just dropped it in the chat to you, Damien, just so you have it. Cool. So that should be your handle in discourse. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I think that's all. We are one, two, three, four, five, six person. What am I missing? Oh, no, no. I, uh, we are five. Okay. So, first announcement today is the weekly release. So, I don't remember the number. I assume it's uh, um, it's not finished. It has it had an issue on the packaging step. So, it's minor issue. I'm not sure why. I'm showing the issue on the screen right now. At the step synchronize mirror, so which is really unusual, never seen that error before. Uh, there is a step where there is a rsync command in charge of copying the file generated locally by the pipeline to a remote mirror through the rsync protocol. And that rsync step failed. At first glance, the error is a warning that says some files disappeared before the, we were able to push them. Because AirSync initially lists the files, then it has a list of files and say, okay, I will copy them one after the other. So one of the files on that list has vanished when AirSync tried to copy it. Not sure why, that's weird. Is it the agent going somewhere else? Did the controller restart it? I'm not sure. Uh, just survey so you don't feel bad. It's not the pipeline utility step because that pipeline is still present on the controller unless you un manually un uninstall it and restarted the controller, which should have reinstalled it. I haven't restarted, but I have manually installed it. Okay. So since there is no obvious error here, but the script returned an error code 24. Um, so I've kicked a new package build because that one is idempotent. That won't trigger a new release. The release has been done by the core build. Now it's the core package. We can retrigger it as much as we want until it works. So that one is easy. Uh, that's the status of the weekly. During packaging, repackaging in progress. Then Docker image and item of the release checklist. Is that clear, correct? Or do you want to add something about today's weekly? One, two, three, okay. Do you have other announcement? Okay, so let's proceed. Next weekly uh, will happen next Tuesday as usual. So 28th of November, is that correct? That is correct. Cool. No, 29. No, no, 29. It should be 29 because then the next that. LTS is 30. Cool. Thanks. Next LTS is 30. So, so please, next Tuesday and next Wednesday, please try to not merge things <laughs> on the infrastructure. And I will remind you, Damien. Yes, please. <laughs> next security uh, release. Uh, not none as far as I can tell. Next major event, still the first dem. Actually, well, and there's one other next major event. Mark has the action item to propose a two week delay in the delivery of 2.375.2. Because okay. otherwise, our regular four week clock would put 2.375.2 right between the Christmas holiday and the New Year's holiday for many of us in the Western world. And 
many of us won't be available during that time. So we will, we will follow, I will propose the usual pattern we've had in the past, which was delay two weeks. Makes sense. Or that will be a way to push some Easter eggs on the next LTS release, right? But it's not, it's not who we are. <laughs> that is that is a terrible thing to suggest. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> if you need bad ideas, I have plenty. <laughs> Thanks for that info, Mark. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Any other upcoming calendar thing? Nope. Okay, let's proceed. What have we done during the past week? Completely done. Uh, first, containerized Java 17 Windows agents. That one was long overdue. We were able to use Java 17 on all Linux kind of agent and on Windows virtual machines. However, the Windows container agent are the most used for Windows builds and tests for Jenkins core and plugins. So thanks Stefan for taking care of this one. The You're initial welcome. plan was uh, having an all-in-one image from Packer image for having, like Linux, for having the same thing between container and virtual machine. Alas, we are late on that area. It's not that easy because we lack uh, high skills on Windows. We have enough to make it work, but it takes time. So many, many thanks, uh, Stefan, for this one. Uh, next one is GDK19, as far as I can tell. Yeah, we got the issue already. Um, we keep having a bunch of Jenkins login access, but the pattern change, the past, the, the most recent one, the people are asking us to give them the access to the admin account with the password admin. So thanks, Hervé, because Hervé was able to ask correctly the question and have an answer to his correctly asked question, where our dear users say, yeah, it's for whatever private IP from whatever oh, yeah. private organization. I have asked him. I, I haven't, I didn't close the, the issue. Oh, no. Uh, Correct. Because I wanted him to respond before closing it. Yeah. Sorry, so I closed it to Wait, ask me. I don't sorry. think this person will come bad. back. But at least, yeah, we, we, got yeah, we can say uh, thanks for the field and uh, the type because the first. I've also started a pull request on a contact uh, so we can profile the issue uh, type and the URL field in the issue with the ID and everything. So. Cool, we many get thanks. Some for info one. by default. I I'm have curious. an uncontacted problem in Jelly, but. I'm curious what is the IP location for that service? I assume it's a range of public IP of someone. So let's do an IP lookup. It's a public instance. Amazon Data Services. Okay, so it's someone using AWS in India. Yep, not much more information. Okay, so is it okay for everyone if we continue seeing such uh, as soon as there is admin on the username or that the URL is not one that we manage, we can immediately cause the issue with a message saying, "Hey, that's not the yeah. that's not the I, issue tracker you are looking for." I think it could be interesting to ask where they've been redirected to the help desk. Okay, I will try issue. not to close too hastily, and I propose we close them during the weekly meetings instead. So, does it make sense? Yes. Thanks a lot, Hervé. Uh, so, login Jira account, LDS template, so we saw it in action. Evergreen plugin has been archived. Thanks, uh, folks, for this one. So, Evergreen used to be a project with simple but workable Jenkins instance that was sending telemetry to our, the Jenkins infrastructure. Um, so we had to clean up and archive this element. That project has been uh, long gone. Uh, Jenkins file not being run for Jenkins CI bridge method injector. That was a request to add a project to CI Jenkins IO. Thanks, Hervé. More component to archive, more login, 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 login. <laughs> Backload of, of already built item on CI Jenkins IO. 
Um, Hervé, can you give up on heads on this one, if you remember? Uh, we were testing the incremental build of uh, workflow or task step with a fix from Jesse uh, since two weeks. And uh, since we didn't have any issue, Jesse merged his pull request and I've uh, deployed this uh, released uh, version on release on CI. Thanks. So it looks like that issue has been fixed. That was a bug in that made some job that were stopped or canceled and they were still appearing on the build queue without any, we could send the stop signal, but they were kept in the build queue unless you run some groovy commands on the console. So thanks for helping fixing that bug, Hervé. Uh, we had a request. So thanks, Stefan, for taking care of uh, this one. Uh, Jesse asked to install the pipeline GitHub plugin. So the BOM project was able to get some additional pipeline keyword from that plugin, specifically environment variable used uh, set by the plugin on GitHub repositories. So thanks, Stefan. And finally, key cloak. That was only the cleanup, Stefan, is that correct? Yes. Cool. So we should uh, have a few more bugs on the AWS, thanks to your work. More nice. bug or more bug? Bug. Uh, bugs. Money. <laughs> Sorry, Harvey. There isn't any help desk issue about it, but I think we should talk about uh... So clean up of read YAML for more function. I've put the link uh, of your issue in the chat, in the June yes. chat. Correct. So is that one done or not done? Done. Okay, so, okay. Again. No need to create an issue. I'm adding it to the notes if it's okay for you, Hervé. Yes, sure. So Jesse took the issue and uh, he basically uh, inlined uh, uh, the run ATH function we had in the pipeline library. Uh, and he got rid of the metadata uh, YAML file altogether. He inlined uh, and hardcoded this, uh, this parameter in the command line. And uh, it was the last uh, known usage of uh, the read YAML uh, function provided by the pipeline's utility step plugin, which we wanted to remove as it's uh, it's uh, brittle and not uh, as secure as we want. So I've removed it uh, manually from uh, all our instance uh, from the Docker Jenkins LTS image. And uh, there is only now uh, the customware packager pipeline library function, which is uh, using write YAML and uh, find files function. But I didn't find any usage of this pipeline library function, neither in Jenkins CI, neither in Jenkins Infra. So I have asked any more question if anyone knew any usage. Uh, I assume it was used for Organizing its name, it was used for Evergreen, or maybe something like that. I think it was uh, a project driven by Oleg, where there was Jenkins a website. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, so I think Jenkins Fire Runner benefited from that service, but it was a service online that we hosted and we removed a few months or years ago, where a user had a web UI and they could download a Jenkins War prepackage with a set of plugins or prepackage with whatever settings uh, you want. And so the system was in background generating the zip and unzip and downloading the correct, a bit like a Docker custom image, as far as I can understand it. But that project might have been GSOC, I'm not sure about that, but that has been completely gone. So we removed it from the infra last year. So that's, that was the main point. Maybe the library can be used by something else in the ATH, but I don't think so. I think it has been long cleanup. No, it's not used in the ATH. Mark, do you have any memory about uh, the custom war package or project? 
Yeah, it was a Google Summer of Code project and uh, it's idle right now. So okay. it was attempting to do, but I'm not aware of anything that would require us to keep it running. If you find it helpful to shut it down, I'm not aware of anyone who's actively consuming it. I think there is only the function in the pipeline library right now. So if it's not used, I, yep. I'd say to it clean up. Right, it's safe to remove it. Let's um, remove the last function. Pipeline, last pipeline function, uh, custom war packager. Okay, thanks, Hervé, for that works. So, just a reminder for everyone by removing that pipeline plugin, which was providing useful but dangerous um, uh, methods because these methods are pipelines, so they were run on a controller, why most of the time we want to run such element on an agent, so SH should do that. Do that. So if you see a pipeline on the infrastructure failing because missing a keyword and that keyword happened to be on that list, then that means that the pipeline or the pipeline library calling that keyword should be changed. All of these items can be replaced by an, a smart SH command except the node by label keyword. That's the only one that not that easy, but the rest are just reading and writing specific format of files. Thanks a lot, Hervé, on making the infrastructure safer. <laughs> Any question or other topic that we forgot that has been closed? No, okay, so let's move on the currently being worked items. Uh, work in progress, I'm taking them on the right list. Separate Terraform backends and repository, Azure Net and Azure. So let me add a link. So that one was a, an idea initially by Hervé to have two Azure projects for Terraform to separate the maintenance of the critical and really sensitive resources such as the, the networks with the rest of the infrastructure creating virtual machines cluster. So we could have different roles or at least different life cycles. So we could risk cleaning up a Terraform project without risking to impact the whole infrastructure. That uh, issue wasn't prior until today or at least until we discussed yesterday the as the team, because we discovered that our network are not IPv6 compliant. We need to recreate all of our networks and migrate or recreate resources to get to the new network so we can support at least people from the outside being able to request infrastructure in IPv6. We have an help desk issue opened by a user two weeks ago about that topic because IPv6 is mandatory in India since the 1st of September this year which means we need to be able to provide our services to our Indian user with their default setup. So that means it's the correct opportunity since we are working on private cavities and then we will have to recreate all the, all the Kubernetes cluster. We decided that, okay, that will delay a bit our work on ACP and the new cluster. But since we have to migrate everything, creating from scratch on new network that are clean without the mapping issues with IPv6 compatibility, that should be a, the, the right moment to do it. So we might lose two weeks of work in terms of a delivery timeline, but the gain will be IPv6 support out of the box and cleaning up all our uh, network issue at once. So Hervé, what's the status of that? Because I gave the why, now it's the what and the how. Um, were you able to start working on it or do are you going uh, to connect? Yeah, I have created the repository. I want, okay. I'd like to, uh, I need to confirm your name. I've duplicated the Azure folder in Terraform state. I haven't committed anything or run Terraform yet. But, okay. Uh, and then uh, we'll have to start work on recreating our virtual network. Okay, and cool. The so VPN and the 
Okay, so we keep it on the next iteration. And just let me add a link to the our user IPv6. Okay, we are. So that one is now a requirement for both um, private gates and the AAA record. So more on this too, a bit later. Is there any blockers that we should or message on that topic that we should uh, discuss now? Is there any thing not clear for everyone? Is there any question on that uh, priority? No, you will you'll, uh, redact the uh, VPN issue later if I am. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So as yeah, as part of the this new network, so I need to write an issue about the new IPv6 private network. That will be between the issue we just talked about and about private gates, uh, because we need new network. And in order to join that new private network, we need a new VPN machine only for the private network. So I got an issue to write. Let me add. Update the portal to write an issue about private network. Ah, okay. Plus new VPN private machine. Uh, so yes, we have to create these resources and we have to work it out. More details on that part. We already shared knowledge with the recording uh, the free uh, franchise from on the room. Now we have to translate that knowledge publicly with links on an issue. Any question? Okay, next issue we have on the list on the left is a migrate um, Alkai Jenkins IO component to Jenkins Infra. Uh, Hervé, can you give us more information on this one? So, uh, Gavin uh, transferred the, his uh, proof of concept uh, for web components uh, for Jenkins uh, IO uh, in Jenkins Infra GitHub organization. I haven't closed the issue as I want to put in place a service account for NPM, so he, you wouldn't have to put uh, a personal token on in the repository uh, to access the NPM account. I even uh, blocked uh, in the previous weeks. Okay. It's okay for adding NPM service account. Okay. Thanks for the status. Any question, clarification on that topic? Nope. Okay. Next one, publish pipeline step doc generator and backend extension indexer artifact to some kind of storage. So the name is misleading because the core of that issue has already been done uh, since two weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need CI Jenkins IO to be up in order to generate the Jenkins.io website, which is a nice thing for the security team. The there were two files generated by these two projects that are zip file containing an auto-generated ASCII doctor format of the pipeline steps and other elements that are then consumed by Jenkins IO to generate the websites, some page of the websites. For instance, if you go to Jenkins.io documentation, whenever page and you go on the left menu to pipeline steps references, you see an automatically generated list of the pipeline keyword provided by all the plugins. So the, the goal of these jobs is to parse all plugin, extract whatever information to generate these pages. However, we migrated, so we fixed that by migrating the pipeline in Infra CI because we need a private credential that must not be on CI Jenkins IO publicly. And that credential uh, required us to move the pipeline to Infra CI at first step. But uh, we forgot, and that's, we have been reminded by Daniel and team, thanks for that, that end users still want or should be able to contribute to these two projects. So they need a publicly available CI. 
which means at least build and test on this project. So Stefan is following uh, the work I did on the next uh, item we will discuss uh, on unifying the Jenkins file. So we have one Jenkins file consumed by CI Jenkins IO publicly and infra CI. And only the deploy step is run on infra CI. Stefan, can you just give up uh, can you just give up a yes. status where you are um, if you have lookers? I, I, I started by the first one pipeline step doc generator and uh, and uh, in order to have the to have it to work fluently on CI and infra, I had to do two distinct PR to have the same label uh, for the agent on CI and the other one on uh, infra. And like that, we can switch back and forth between the two of them. That's compatible. Okay. So works these two back and forth for settings, agent labels and tools to allow unified pipeline. Is yes. my understanding correct? That's perfectly that. And Thank you. Controllers. You, you Which, were that way more way based than me. No problem. I just want to be sure you understand. And I'm That's exactly it. that. Okay. So is it okay to move that issue to the next yes, milestone please. for you? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, that one is 29 already. Let me clean up. So that was okay. So the next. Uh, the next item on my left list is stories is not handling pull requests. So uh, I've already, I finished the work. So that's the same idea. We need both public and private. Infra CI deploys previews websites on uh, pull requests, but also deploy the main website on Netlify. So it has specific credential, it must be private. Still, CI Jenkins IO need to at least build, lint, and test the project publicly. So the, the unifying work has been uh, done by Stefan and I in pair. So that Stefan is now autonomous to do the two others, as we just did. Uh, I've hit, I was about, I was almost closing the issue, but I've hit, hit an issue. On Infra CI, the size of our virtual machine on the Kubernetes cluster is a bit too small compared to the amount of resource that we require. Uh, in the case of CI Jenkins IO, we have big machines where we pack a lot of pods. We require four CPU and eight gigabyte per pod, but the machines are limited in CPU. So right now, Infra CI is not able to deploy uh, anything for that project. So I need to fix, to find a solution for this one. Um, my uh, option is to add a worker pool on temp private gates of kind high memory with bigger machines. So that should be usable by this build. Um, yeah, and then uh, if it works, I will open a pull request on Terraform for the private gates to add that uh, same kind of node pool. So I'm adding it to the next iteration that should be okay. Uh, Unless there is a question, you need clarification on that one. Nope. Let's continue. Next issue is remove Windows Slave plugin from CI Jenkins IO and related server. Um, so Mark, I remember that you you removed the plugin or you checked at least it wasn't installed on our Docker image. Is that correct? I, I checked that it was not referenced on the image, but that didn't uninstall it. And but thankfully, somebody else did the work to uninstall it. At least as far as I understand, it's it's been removed. Thank you very much to whoever the yeah. kind person was that did that. Yeah, yeah, since we had we had the warning issue while I was upgrading plugins on CI Jenkins IO, uh, that was the opportunity during a restart to test. So I took the opportunity. So is there anything left on that task or should we call it closed? For infra, I'm not aware of anything. If we discover, 
uh, some reason that that we can't remove it. One of the problems of can't remove it is because it has such an ancient Jenkins baseline. Uh, it can create an implied dependency on other ancient plugins or other ancient plugins create an implied dependency on it. So if we have any ancient plugins, my first preference would be get rid of them too. But okay. <laughs> if, if we can't, then we could do a new release of this plugin to cause it to depend on a newer Jenkins version and resolve that issue. Okay. If, we, if we find we can't get rid of it in some place, let me know I have permissions to release a new version if I need to. Okay. Um, do you think you will be able to continue the last check of the controller? Or do you want to delegate it to the team um, for that specific issue? Let's see, the, the other controllers are, it would probably be easier on me if we if others, if someone else took the, the last checks, simply okay. because I'm not sure that I'm always on the, the VPN or I'm on the VPN frequently enough to, to find all the controllers. Okay, any volunteer? Okay, so I'm taking it then. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, so, uh, one last check of all controllers before closing. If implicit dependency from another plugin, ping mark for a plugin raise to help. Any question, any clarification? Okay, clean up of unused resources in Azure. Hervé, can I let you explain the status of this one, please? The reason um, and the status. So reason is uh, because we saw, uh, I, I wanted to make a review of the resource group in Azure. And uh, so we created this issue so we can uh, do a follow up cleanup, uh, depending on what we reviewed. And uh, the first uh, review we made, we've made uh, was about the Broad Confluence uh, resource group. There was two database um, uh, used uh, before for the Confluence we hosted. And uh, each of them uh, uh, cost about uh, one uh, hundred and fifty uh, dollars per month. So uh, quite a nice economy here. Yeah. I've uh, started the dump of this MySQL database. The first one is uh, the backup is uh, is complete, and the second one I uh, I. Uh, I have a few issues uh, while uh, running the dump from a uh, Docker image running locally. So I'm doing it uh, now from, I have to do it uh, now from uh, the latest uh, virtual machine. So I won't uh, get network error or dump error. Uh, database so the backup is almost complete, but uh, yeah. Yes, it has to be complete before we delete this resource group with uh, oh, this database. Cool. Um, and so I'm giving the status about the prod community function. Uh, we So it's in the list to be cleaned up because we decided after confirming with at least team, I think Maroc and Gavin, that the repository could be archived because it was used only for evergreen. So in Azure, we have a resource group with um, Azure function, including this one, but also some infra function. So I have to send an email on the mailing list, but the developer mailing list, just to be sure that no one is using this function because we saw some, a few calls like one to four on the past months, but just a few. So we just to be sure that it's not used for statistic generation or something we don't we are not aware of because once we have deleted this resource group, 
we cannot go back because there are data on some repositories. So the goal is to ask before delete. The cost of this one is not so much as you can see, but it increased on the past months, not sure why. So that's why better to ask before removing it. What do you think of creating an issue for uh, each follow-up cleanup? Like uh, this is current issue just for spot confluence, creating another one for pod community function? and link them to the review one. Yeah, I, I, I will close this one in favor of the two new issues then, but yeah, okay. Closing this one when I'm when the backup will be complete and the cleanup complete and yeah. another yes. one for the product, yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Let's split community to another issue. Um, and ask on the mailing list. So I'm on this one. Mark, do you have any memory of community of Azure function that could be used by the infra, which are not the community evergreen functions? No, no, not not any longer. And Azure functions, yeah, we, we want to get off them anyway. So even if we found that, hey, there was a serious problem that we inadvertently did, I suspect we still then say we want to find a way to replace that service. Okay. So I'm not aware of any any requirement for them. Okay, cool. So more issues. So I'm adding this issue to the next milestone. And as explained by RV, we will try right now uh, weekly and then monthly in the future just to review the resource group and their role. Uh, in Azure, just to be sure that we don't have uh, some dormant uh, resources consuming us money. Thanks, Hervé, for uh, leading that. Any question, clarification? Nope. Okay. Windows agent on CI, Jenkins IO disconnect prematurely. Uh, I thought we were done with this one. It's done. I thought too. Yeah, because the last step for Stefan was to remove the Windows label on the agent. Oh, don't we need to update acceptance test, the acceptance test job before closing? Probably. Okay. Last step, update acceptance test job to stop checking this label and come and check the new real ones. Um, Stefan, it's allocated to you. Is it okay to work on it next uh, yes, iteration? Yes, please. Because I thought that what I have, I've been done, so I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, next is the private, the new private AWS cluster. Uh, so before asking Hervé for a status because he worked on it until the the discussion around the networks. So that one won't be moved to the next iteration because it it's obviously now we know that it's blocked by the creation of the new network. So Hervé already did the EV lifting of that. So we have a cluster ready on our current private network. It, it's almost working, a lot of work was done. It's Terraform Manage, which is the value of that task. So we should be able to recreate it easily once we will have the new networks. Um, so Hervé, first of all, can you give us a status, assuming that uh, if we don't have the network issue and we were able to migrate, did you have blockers, uh, next step to be done, so delayed, but to be done? The next step uh, for this cluster would have been to test uh, Afra jobs on this instance. Okay. I've added a storage class. I have a service manager, Rakme, Datadog, uh, public and private, and Jinx Ingress working on it. Also, uh, Jenkins controller. The nice job. That improve a lot the maintainability for the future of these elements. Um, proposal, since that issue 
is deprioritized in favor of the private network. Is it okay for you if first we move back the, the that associated pull request on Kubernetes management back to draft? I, this one is only for public, private. Uh, yeah, I would merge this one if it's okay. If it's good for you, it has only the self manager, private, public, and things. Only okay. the other let, service. Let me rephrase. We will have to trash that cluster to recreate it. So, which means, what do you think if we uh, remove that cluster to not pay money for that until we are done mm -hmm. with the network? Which means, Merging this one will not make sense, but I, um, what uh, what would be nice? It's not obligatory or nothing, but mm -hmm. merging this one, I can prepare the next one with the separation of infra between the term private and the public uh, in the private cluster. Even if it's not merged yet, I I would have my pull request for the next step ready. I'm still, uh, it's still uh, an extract from my first pull request, which was recouping everything. Mm -hmm. um, Hence my just... proposal to move it back to draft, not closing it. So it's still there. We don't lose your work. But since we are going to trash the cluster mm -hmm. for not paying it, that will not make sense to merge it. It's just, I don't want to merge it, but I want to keep it. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I see it. Uh, this part will be the same uh, later with a new cluster. It would have validated this part, and I could have opened. I could have oh, uh, okay. go uh, further, preparing the next request. This one I won't come back on this. It just will. Yes. So it's, okay, I understand. Uh, but then, if we merge it. Then you will have to open one pull request on Terraform to to remove the cluster. And second, you will open a second pull request on that repo to remove private gates from tentative of being deployed. Otherwise, if we destroy the cluster, we will fail the Kubernetes okay. management job. That's why. Yeah, I okay. That. okay. So is it okay for you? So then if it's ready, can you update and just we can review and merge it. So it will validate your last assumption and close the transaction. And then you will have to clean up the cluster and bot. No Is I, it OK? I'll remove it, yeah. Cool. So can you update the pull request on kube management so we can proceed after the meeting? And so you should be able to remove the cluster tomorrow. Sounds good? Yep. OK, I will need to update it further uh, after the meeting then. Uh, I will comment. So just, uh, sorry, moving to InfraSync next, and I will add a comment explaining why. The last item is Realign Repo Jenkins CI org mission. So Mark and I have spent some time yesterday. We will write after that meeting. Uh, first thing is that uh, Artifactory is eventually consistent. Sounds like Daniel confirmed that when you create a new virtual repository, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. At least the system says it's created successfully, but then you have random, depending on the distributed instance that you eat, you have random word behavior. So we need at least one full day before everything is synchronized on the system. That issue slowed us down yesterday, but right now we are still trying to, to validate if we can have an easy path. Uh, right now, we should be able to confirm tomorrow. Uh, so we are doing technical POC work. We're not touching the existing things. We are only creating virtual repositories uh, on, on the side to confirm what are the scenarios. Once we have confirmed one way or the other, uh, Mark is currently uh, finishing and should let me write uh, the uh, proposal with the migration path. And the next step for me will be to work on a LDAP replication. So at least we could have a read-only replicate, ideally active-active. So then the additional request flow shouldn't break the LDAP. Any question for this one? Okay. 
So that's all for the work in progress. Um, do we have on the issues, new issues that you will want to add? The generator remind the Java 19, uh, Stefan. Oh yeah. Uh, only if you have time for until the next release. Otherwise it stays here on top of the backlog and you will take it only if you have time. I, I promise, I promise, promise. Okay, so that doesn't answer my question. Should I move it to next iteration or, and you sign with your blood that you will do it or? Are <laughs> no, you... no, leave it, leave it here and I will move it in the next if I, I find time, but first I need to finish the other ones. I agree. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Daniel opened an issue about uh, plugin sites being behind the tweets. I don't understand why, since the tweets are published from the RSS flux, uh, flux published yep. from the plugin sites. Yes. Parallel. Uh, Someone wanted to parallelize things, and now we are suffering from yeah. parallelization. However, um, first, yeah. okay. as written by Daniel, it's not super high priority. Um, it was not for that. I wanted so to please speak about don't. This issue. Sorry. I wanted to speak. I wanted to speak about this issue about not about the priority of for doing it right now. It's about okay. uh, alternatively, if we have logging now. I'd like uh, he, he mentioned something I, I'd like to uh, is uh, it's to have a, a link redirector from which we will be able to have some uh, statistic like a number of link because we for now when we are publishing something uh, on Twitter or on LinkedIn or anything there isn't any stat, stat on this click. And we don't, as he said, uh, Daniel, as Daniel said, we don't even, uh, we don't know if uh, people are clicking on this uh, tweet or not. So we don't know if it has any importance or not. It would allow us to have some visibility in our um, media mm -hmm. publication. And not only media publication, but uh, that good point. Do we Any have any analytic to... tools can 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 provide Not an analytic it, tool. Uh, something really simple. Uh, yeah, just uh, I, I don't want to record the IP. I don't want to record yeah. any. I just want to record the code. There isn't any analytics tool on the market which is RGPD compliant as for today. Just a note. That that's not possible in fact. So of course not. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why a simple yeah. thing could help. Uh, so do you mind, so do you think it should be an associated I, issue? Yeah, I, 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 I think I'll open an issue uh, proposing a, a counter or something, a redirector okay. or some okay. sort. In terms of priority, even the statistics are still priority. really low? Okay, it's just that I just want to underline the fact that if you want to work on this, that will be a contribution outside the priority of the infra. So no problem for working because it's valuable and uh, really useful. Yeah, it has nothing to do for... Yeah, we uh, need a network. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also thinking about what Elon is doing to Twitter. So maybe we won't, we will have to abandon the RSS to Twitter at the moment in time. Uh, I, I've still some bets on the latest that should uh, outgrow Elon with Twitter. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, that was that's a polemic subject. So I don't know, but that's really a good idea. And uh, thanks for mentioning the topic uh, during the meeting. I think the outcome will be writing an issue with that idea and sharing it with the advocacy SIG asynchronously yes. or synchronously. Your pick. Mm -hmm. I assume it has been discussed. So I'm just just a beginner here, but. Yeah, looks really good idea on a lot of media. And yeah, if you are able to write it, that could be a service or still don't know, infrastructure with anonymous data, that should be. Cool. Um, what do we have? So Java 19, 
uh, an issue open by Stefan as well. Uh, we have quotas of pods. Oh yeah, I forgot this one. Uh, so last week uh, during the team meeting, we said we have to open the issue. The issue is open. Uh, I'm adding it to the infra sync next. If someone has time, that's only bonus. Just to be sure the two configuration file we have on two different locations should have the same number. I think that's all for me. Do you have other uh, topics? No, good for me too. Cool. So I'm oh, gonna. We, we, yep. we had a warning, but something. Let me let me find that. Uh, there was something oh. that I mentioned that we need to be careful of, but I forgot yes. the date. Certificate for repo Jenkins IO. Yeah, that's the one. So we have two one really important Jenkins org Shifrog expires the i think it's the 18th of december so last year uh, i don't remember why so i cannot say right now we, uh, we need to create an issue for that need an issue need to do it quickly <laughs> otherwise we will break gfrog for that real december 8, 18. yeah okay cool so last year, and I don't know why, KK manually issued the certificate and send it to Gifrog, encrypted, of course, because we need to send the private key and all the elements of the certificate so they can install it on the repository. Uh, the certificate must have the correct SAN. Subject area networks. Uh, because uh, there is a host name directly inside Gfrog uh, namespace, and we also have repo Jenkins CI, so the certificate should cover both host name at least. We should we can get the the sans from the current certificate. So the issue will require uh, me or anyone writing it to deep dive on the discussion that happened last year. Uh, took some time to KK, so I propose this year we will do the certificate renewal by ourselves. Uh, we should be able to do it either manually or from Kubernetes with DNS records. Uh, with Let's Encrypt should be easier. And Mark and I have a meeting with Gfrog uh, next week, if I'm correct. So we will take care of mentioning it. We will have to not forget it, Mark, to tell them, hey, we will also need to update the certificates. So since they didn't come back to us for migrating the instance to their new SaaS system, we, we have to let them know because if we have to prioritize first the certificates, because that will require them to restart at least a few minutes outage only is expected, but still manual operation to be planned. Thanks for the reminder, Stefan. And as Mark mentioned, domains Jenkins.io and Jenkins-CI.org should be renewed in December. Is that correct? That is, uh, yeah, December or January. They, we've got upcoming renewals for for several domains. I can give you exact dates if you give me just a minute to, to do a quick look. And that's a, that's a Tyler Croy. He's got automation that does it. And the last time I bothered him about it, he said, Mark, ask me when it's less than 28 days to renewal so that my automation has had a chance to run. And that's very, that's very reasonable. So 7 January, 2023, the domain Jenkins-CI.org expires. And 7. 7 January, yeah, 2023. And then the domain Jenkins.io expires 27 January. Twenty twenty-three. Okay. And as far as I know, both both are automated. If we get under 28 days and those have not been renewed, I will start knocking on Tyler's door to to under to see, hey, what's up with the automation? Do we need to shift it? The last time I asked him, his answer was, I don't want to bother shifting the automation, et cetera. Let's just let it keep running. 
Okay. So we'll take care of adding a team calendar event for 20 days before each. So the whole team will have a reminder. Oh, that, that would be great. Thank you very much, Damien. Um, but I won't share Tyler's uh, address, though. <laughs> right, I'm... right. No, and 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 yeah, we, we shouldn't bother Tyler. He's he's still willing to help the project, but he's certainly not actively involved in the project. Just, just give his phone number. That's OK. <laughs> So you don't know Tyler. That's nope. uh, that's why you're joking. Yes. But trust me, you don't want to try bother him. He's clearly better and nastier than the four of us <laughs> on that topic. Okay. <laughs> he has been my my manager for uh, some time. Olivier's manager, uh, yeah, and okay. Mark manager as well. He has quite the sense of humor. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. If uh, one day bear. Uh, by any means you listen to this world, thanks for the work you are doing for the Jenkins project. <laughs> I think that's all. Any other topic? Not that I think of. Okay, so I'm starting screen sharing and recording. I say hello to everyone listening, and then you can say thing once stop recording. Bye-bye and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.